live. It is not Monday, but it is Wednesday. It is at post Mardi Gras. So I hope you guys are up, ready to rock and roll with us this morning. It is chopping it up with Kadar. I'm Perry White. He's Roger Kadar. And if you hear my voice before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button right there below this video. Get the notification every time we go live. The little bell, it came to my phone today. So I want to come to your phone or your device as well. So you hit that notification button. It lets you know when we're going live. Coach Kadar, what's going on? <laughs> How you doing, Mr. White? Perry White. I'm doing well, man. Uh, a long weekend. A lot of people enjoyed themselves. Mardi Gras is over with. South Louisiana does it like nobody else. Uh, all over the place, from the small towns to the big cities. Uh, but now it's finally over. We're moving into that. <laughs> You're not a big fan of the Mardi Gras celebration. I'm not a fan of all. Okay. Uh, yeah, I called it. I told her. I said, hey, Coach said, what are you up to? I said, I'm at Mardi Gras. He said, bye. And <laughs> hung up on me quick. <laughs> yeah. uh, this weekend, though, while all the Mardi Gras festivities were going on, you took a trip over to Houston, Texas uh, to support a, uh, an amazing event. Your friend, Dusty Baker, who is the uh, manager over at the... Uh, Houston Astros, they put together with the Houston Astros Foundation announcing that they were hosting the inaugural, inaugural Cactus Jack HBCU Classic Baseball Tournament with six HBCU baseball programs participating. Uh, and it happened over the weekend. The Classic was the first of its kind uh, in Houston that was hosted by an MLB team with basically the MLB Urban Invitational uh, that started back in 2013 uh, nine-game tournament featuring Houston area teams in Prairie View, Texas Southern, and four schools including Southern University, Grambling, Jackson State, and Mississippi Valley. Uh, for you being there, and you threw out the first pitch. Yes. Now, before we even get into that, let's talk about this first pitch because I know you said last time you had to warm that arm up. What was that first pitch like for you? I nailed it. They gave me a big standing ovation. Did they? But I, I was smart this time. <laughs> I went between the mound and the kitchen. Okay. Didn't try to do it the long way. You took it back to Cal Ripken. You shortened up. You shortened it up. I shortened it up and right there. Right there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had practice uh, throwing a few on the side before. You know, it's amazing. I don't feel so funny coming out of my head. Mm -hmm. I had done it for this before. On the pitch. It was just so funny. The pressure was on. <laughs> Did you, was it a strike or was it a ball? It was a ball because that's what I threw. <laughs> okay, I got you. <laughs> that was a good one. It was it really just me. I don't know. I'm not an ego guy, so it's no big I just want to know if this video, if anybody's listening, send us the video. I want Somebody to see. Somebody said they, they played the video. They got it. Somebody got the video. All right. Well, tag Roger Kadar on Facebook. And so we can see this video. I got to send. But we'll see you in a couple weeks yeah. uh, throwing out the first pitch, April the 1st, at BRCC at Pete Goldsby Field. It'll be Coach Roger Kadar Day, Baton Rouge Community College. Uh, we'll be playing Delgado Community College that day. Uh, you're familiar with both of those programs, aren't you? Very familiar. Mm -hmm. Over the years, uh, both of them provided players for my program. So, uh, Coach Sherman, And I'm not as familiar with the coach. Yeah, Thomas Seminole. Seminole, but I knew his dad. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? I tried to hide his dad many years ago. <laughs> when he was a young coach at Nickel State. Uh -huh. I like what he was doing. And I, I proposed to him, made a proposal. He didn't take it. He went on and did many good things. Mm -hmm. But I knew, I knew, again, talent when I see him. Yes, sir. I knew talent. That's why I'm sitting in this seat, baby. <laughs> but, go ahead. So, but no, I, I'm sure this young man is going to be a good coach. Inherited any of the good things that his dad has passed along. I had a chance to go check them out this weekend while you were in Houston. Uh, they play St. Louis Community College over at Pete Goals. We won all four games over the weekend, two on Saturday, two on Sunday. So, Coach Seminole got them rolling. But 
you were in Houston had a chance to see uh, some good baseball. What was that classic like uh, to be able to get those teams in that big league stadium uh, to play in the city of Houston? Well, that was a really good experience. Fortunately for me, my team has played in that park. But for those young men, that was really a thrill of their life to, be, to have that opportunity. Um, I saw some good quality baseball. Southern Jackson State game 5 4. That was that Friday night. Yeah. yeah. Really good game. Grambling 4 3. Saturday against Southern Grambling. Really good game. And, uh, you know, and I saw. Uh, one more other team I can't remember, but um, I saw good quality baseball, and that's really what you want to see. And uh, you know, I wanted a select for the selection committee to pick 50 guys from HBCUs to play in the All Star game mm-hmm. this summer over in Seattle, Washington, to the All Star game. So. Uh, Jackson State Southern had some good players. Mm-hmm. I didn't see Prairie View and Texas Southern. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, but I did see some good players, which is what, I mean, Southern obviously have a few more better players. And Jackson State, those two programs have the most of, amount of good players in my opinion that uh, I saw this weekend. Uh, what was the behind the scenes like that was on the scene where people saw what was on the field but behind the scenes in terms of uh interaction uh being there what was that like uh, not only for yourself but to see the teams and the coaches there as well well it was uh this is where people network mm-hmm. a lot of networking taking place uh people a lot of people came in and people had a chance to network and uh, i like that behind the scenes I tell you, I ran into Todd Callis. Mm-hmm. Todd Callis is the play by play by play man for the Astros. Okay. And he interviewed me. Nice. Yes. And but Todd and I go back a long ways. Because when he was working he did Cox, we had the Cox contract. I remember. He did some of our games and he remembered that I was always good for an interview. In the third base box and have a conversation while the game is going on. That's the beauty. Not a lot of coaches want to do that, but I was willing to do it because I know what I was helping to promote and sell the game. Were you able to interact with any any of the coaches as well as the players from any of the teams? No, I stayed away from them. Yeah, I didn't want to take away from uh, from what they were doing. That it was their day. Even though we got honored and everything, it's just, we were just a five afterthought, you got me? It was all about them playing. That's who the people came to see. And they come to see me. They came to see the team. And uh, I thought it was The fame base was pretty good for Southern Grammar and Southern Jackson State. There's schools in particular. The fame base was pretty good. That sounds about right when you talk about uh, Southern and Jackson, they always show them no matter where is it, right? <laughs> but then the Gremlin had a little bigger crowd. Mm-hmm. You know, they, you know they, Houston is it's a good city for because of the industry. Those schools send a lot of alumni to those industries, so, and they came out. Yeah, Houston, Atlanta t- t- normally tend to be hotbeds for alums out of HBCUs in the South. They're large metropolitan areas, like you said, the industry. So the jobs, the quality of life, the ability to raise families there. Uh, those two cities typically attract a large portion of African-Americans to be able to go there. And so that's why you see a lot of African-American events held because in Atlanta this year, the Swag Baseball Tournament will be moved there. So that would be different to be in the Atlanta area as well. Well, I think this is a, all of the schools who participate who will make it. Yeah, 
Yeah. You know, if you hear this, they're going to have a pretty good fan base in Atlanta. So Atlanta is really the melting pot uh, for, for whatever it is. I mean, that city has been in the last 20 years. Call it the Black Mecca, uh, you know, because so many African American people in the South and in the North, New Yorkers. A lot of people move down to Atlanta because uh, you look at life and what you're able to do with a, a little, and you can get a lot in Atlanta. You can get some nice place to live in Atlanta where, you know, in New York it would have probably cost you an arm and a leg to get nothing nearly as nice as what you can get in Atlanta. And so, you know, that being a hotbed for you see a lot of HBCU stuff happening in Atlanta. Uh, I just was there a few weeks ago for an HBCU Battle of the Bands. Of course, you know, you get the MEAC SWAC uh, football challenge. You get the Celebration Bowl and football. So, and now you add in the SWAC baseball tournament. You're constantly putting yourself in. And then I like it because when you deal with those large metropolitan areas where people typically that are alums of these schools, they take their families there and this is where they're growing them. And then their kids are going to school. Now you can go back and you can recruit those neighborhoods, those schools, and those next generation of kids because of the large the metropolitan base. That's why I used to like the classics back in the day, the football classics. You know, Southern and many HBCUs would go to Chicago, Indianapolis, Detroit, uh, St. Louis, because you got these large areas where you can go and you can recruit these uh these huge pockets of where african-american uh students are that may not even really be so familiar with your schools and then you bring them down because i'm sure you as a coach you travel to some places uh and recruited guys that weren't familiar with southern or hbcus yeah uh, you know i want to go back to atlanta you know it's, it's the mecca for black uh, athletes you know uh, and i think it's really important to Washington, D.C. was called Chocolate City. <laughs> they had it Chocolate City. It ain't no more Chocolate City. Atlanta is Chocolate City. You know, uh, so it replaced him as Chocolate City. Nobody want to go live in D.C. Nah. I mean, you know, uh, but Atlanta, I mean, it has, ooh, it's amazing what has happened uh, to that city, you know. Uh, but we'll be there in April, uh, May, so we'll yeah, and then you talk about what was it like for you going to different cities, those metropolitan areas, uh, and, and selling HBCU and selling Southern to families and young people who was like, what is that? Well, it was, a, it was an experience in itself in that I had to go. Uh, Here we go. Uh, you know, we had to go and uh, try to get people to come. And it was an education journey also. Because a lot of people, as you mentioned, didn't know that much about these things. Especially the ones that were further away from them. You know, uh, so, uh, I just, I try to educate them and tell them some good things. Then you start name dropping. You see, you have to name drop at that point. <laughs> and that's when you start name dropping. You know, oh, yeah, I know that person. Well, that person attended some. And so that's how you really get them up to speed by name dropping. Uh, you can you can show them stuff, but I just think name dropping has carry more weight mm -hmm. because if someone made it big, they're saying to themselves, "I can make it too mm -hmm. if I go there." You got me. So what it it tears down the fact that it doesn't matter if you go to an HBCU. When you saw the talent this weekend, for you, uh, what seemed to be the most talented position right now that you see? Talented? Yeah. I saw three good shortstops, even though, uh, you know, uh, and I saw three good center fielders. Mm. Those are the position you're probably going to find your most athletic people. For the people that don't know, why is that? Well, coaches got to put, when you're building a team, you want to build it up. Stay with the mic. Yeah. That's where the majority of the action is. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want to be strong there. So you have a tendency, you always want to place your 
better players in those positions. Mm. And uh, so, and uh, I was telling uh, uh, a gentleman uh, what happened. It was a young man by the name of Elanis Westbrooks. Elanis Westbrooks is a Houston native, played at the University of Texas, and he played with the San Francisco Giants and scouted for them. So we were talking. And I said, you know, one thing that HBCU does is I was playing that for Southern and Northern I said, these are smaller guys. And what they have is they can come to a school like Southern and Northern. And they can get better. Wait, they won't. If they go to a white school, they won't even hit see the field. But at Southern and Grambling, they get to play. They get to build confidence. And one kid may have a chance to get drafted. You know, the kid from Southern. Mm-hmm. When I first saw him, he was just a small little kid. But now he's walking up and getting some weight. He's swinging the bat better. You know, making solid contact. Not trying to overdo too much. Those are the kind of things that you, uh, HBCU, provide for kids like that. You know, I've talked to scouts on the NFL side when they're looking for uh, talent from this level, and a lot of times they say, uh, well, they have a knock on the the kid, the young man may be talented, but it's the talent that he's going against that makes it hard for them to evaluate him. In baseball, what is that like when they're evaluating talent and seeing guys on this level? Well, it's a little different because the, the evaluation is a lot different in baseball than football. Mm-hmm. In baseball, I mean, if you can throw 95, 96 miles per hour, doesn't matter who you compete against. Uh, if you can hit home run, it doesn't matter. If you got power, you see what I'm saying? Because scouts now are able to see bat speed, power, mm-hmm. home velocity, running speed, good hand eye coordinated field ball. It doesn't matter who you're playing against. If those things stay out, you get an opportunity. And if that that thing they're saying in football is a lie. It's a way to keep kids out. You got me? Mm-hmm. It's a way to keep them out. It's just, you know, you could tell if a kid doesn't matter who he plays against. Now, I mean, when I say it, it does matter to me, but you could tell if a kid has it or not. You could tell. Mm-hmm. Well, what, what a lot of people say, you know, that's just the lazy way uh, for those scouts. It's yeah. just a lazy way out for them to not have to want to go evaluate or or to be around to say this guy could be just like they, they want us typically tend to be around the bigger programs and associate right. themselves around with them. And then they rather ready to make a mistake on a Big Ten, Big Ten player from a big time school. They'll make a mistake and. And they won't get chewed out about it. You got me? Mm-hmm. But you can't make a mistake if you get a kid from the HBCU. You got to nail it. Yeah. Or you'll be gone. <laughs> and it's a shame. It is. You know, it is a shame. So I think that there should be more than the amount of kids they draft. What they draft two or three years out of HBCUs. If they draft that many. Let me ask you this. Have you, were you ever, and I won't say a fan, but the thought process with baseball being one of the last sports or the last sport where they draft out of high school, what's your thoughts on that? I have no problem with it because they go to the minor league. Mm-hmm. And they've always done it that way. That doesn't make you right, but they've always done it that way. Because if you send people to the minor league, which I think is really good, minor league is so much better now than it was because you got smarter people. you got people who understand what they're doing coaching mm-hmm. before people were hiring their friends giving about people a job who were unqualified and didn't understand race relationship how uneducated they were mm-hmm. you know now you got people who understand the business of baseball it's more than it's a business you got me before those people in the minor league didn't treat it as a business you know they would just eliminate people because somebody may not like that person. Is that tough as a college baseball coach when 
uh, you're going to talk to a young man who is very talented coming out of high school and he has the possibility of being drafted and going to the minor league, but then he also has the possibility of college being uh, an ultimate direction for him to go in as well. Is that is that tough to try to talk a young man to choose college or minor league in that in that sense? Uh, yeah, uh, it, it depends on the family. Yeah, it depends. If somebody offers you ten thousand dollars. <laughs> or yeah. 20, go to college. Yeah. You know, if you're good enough, you can build a home. Hey, let's take a break right now. We've been running a little bit. All right, let's do that and we'll come back and be more chopped up with Kato, all right? Then look, look no, no further, further than, than the trusted, trusted choice of African Safe and Hog. Conveniently located, located off of Government Street in the city of Baton Rouge. Trust the extra locks in that Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and then industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Take your fun full throttle with a single touch. There are places to fly high, swing low, or maybe the old bell ring. Your targets are inside. Better your game by playing ball of almost every variety. Need to get your breath? There's a place for that, too. Countless ways to play beyond the swing sets. Breck, we're more than a playground. It is time to train in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in of the breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com. We've got, got the place. place. Gear, Gear up for where the rubber, rubber meets the, the mud. Or stir, stir up memories of a lifetime. Reach, reach new heights. Gravitate towards something, something out of this world. world. Even, Even travel, travel back, back in time. You might, you might like a little drama in your life. Or get, get in touch, touch with your inner nature, nature lover. Release some pent-up pent -up energy while you're at it. There's, there's plenty to do beyond the swing sets. sets. Brack, we're more, more than a playground. Hey, hey, Coach, Coach Roger Cato here. here. There's, There's something, something about teamwork, teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When, when I, I need, need a tool, I call the Roadrunner toy. Roadrunner is four generations strong, strong and, and home right, right here in Baton Rouge. Rouge. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Coach. There's, There's no, no job, job too large or too small. small. Call, call Roadrunner Road Runner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call the Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. You're your go-to tax relief. It is time to train in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in of the breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com. With over 60 years of combined experience, Kathy Sherburn and Anna Barnett bring a wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Framing Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their customers to choose from. Whether you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kids' playroom, Acadian Framing Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. 
call 225-927-6129 or go to www.acadianframe.com. All right, we're back. More of Chopping It Up with Kadar. I'm Perry White. He's Roger Kadar. And, of course, if you hear my voice, hit that subscribe button. Get the notification every time we go live. And as well as subscribe for support. We'd love to have your support here on the show as we continue to rock and roll. I hope you guys had a safe Mardi Gras fun. I hope you had all the food you can eat because now for a lot of people, uh, you know, it is Lent in certain religions so a lot of people are going to be giving up some things and so <laughs> you giving up anything i don't know man <laughs> hey, you, know, you know what the saying is what's this why the back in the days before uh-huh. when he made tell people they couldn't eat 50 meat for 40 days uh-huh. the, the saying that Brother on the fish market. <laughs> so it was all a it was all a scheme to get everybody in there to eat the fish. Yeah, it is. yeah I uh you know I, I like a good fish plate, so ain't nothing wrong well, with that. You know, uh, some would say that. <laughs> yes, I mean, I mean it's just interesting. Yeah, they say you what you typically uh I know you get fish on Fridays typically. Oh, okay. You get a good fried fish. I'm actually frying some fish today, so Oh, I th- thought you eat fish all the time, but it's on Friday you gotta eat fish. Yeah, that's typically uh I grew up Catholic, so it was like uh you could give up certain things. So as a kid, you know, it was always uh give up candy or something <laughs> that you that you wanted the most. Like so you won't eat candy for the next forty days, but it was like you could eat, but on Fridays was the day you didn't eat meat you wouldn't eat typically oh, had a okay. fish plate okay. yeah the, the church will will give uh normally sold fish plates stuff like that on fridays but uh normally most people would give up meat or they'll give up something that they indulged in a lot you know same way like the new year's resolution people start the new year off strong first two weeks like they said we're going to the gym every day the gym is the most packed place the first two weeks of the new year by the time you get to the end of january going into february everybody's kind of lost that enthusiasm of you know i'm gonna be fit this year same way typically happens when people give this up it starts off strong but you know you're eating a burger on fridays when you're supposed to be going to eat some fish so it definitely happens uh, this time of year as you know i told you i deal with allergies allergies man just kick my butt we need an endorsement by an allergy company what you think with some type of allergy medicine yeah you and i in particular <laughs> <laughs> Are we good? All right, let's do this then. Uh, let's take another break right quick, and then uh, when we come back, we'll try to see if we got our guest on and, and, and get things rocking and rolling, all right? So y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Chopping It Up with Kato, all right? Then look, look no, no further, further than, than the trusted, trusted choice, choice of African, African Safe, safe and Lock. Conveniently located off the government street in Mississippi Baton Rouge. Trust, trust the extra locks, locks in that outfit for all, all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trust trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Take, Take your fun full throttle with, with a single, single touch. touch. There are places to fly high, swing low, or maybe the old bell ring. Your targets are in sight. Better your game by playing ball of almost every variety. Need to catch your breath? There's a place for that, too. Countless ways to play beyond the swing sets. Breck, you're more than a playground. It is time to train in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in of the breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. 
So, so get, get back, back to your, your life and, and be quick, quick about it. it. Baton Rouge, Rouge Metro, Metro Airport. Airport. It's, it's about, about time. FlyDTR.com. Have a passion? We've got the place. Gear up for where the rubber meets the mud. Or stir up memories of a lifetime. Reach new heights. Gravitate towards something out of this world. Even travel back in time. You might like a little drama in your life. Or get in touch with your inner nature lover. Release some pent-up energy while you're at it. There's plenty to do beyond the swing sets. Brack, we're more than a playground. Hey, hey, Coach, Coach Roger Kador here. here. There's, There's something, something about teamwork, teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When, when I, I need a tool, I call Roadrunner Toy. Roadrunner's Road four generations strong and home right here in Baton Rouge. Thank, Thank Coach. There's, There's no, no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We, we want, want an arm and leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you, Coach. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. It is time to, to trade in your isolation for celebration, to, to break out and get away. And at that Baton Rouge Metro, Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in of the breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. FlyBTR.com. With over 60 years of combined experience, Kathy Sherber and Anna Barnett bring a wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Frame and Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their customers to choose from. Whether you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kids' playroom, Acadian Frame and Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. Call 225-927-6129 or go to www.acadianframe.com. Looking to get, get some, some keys, keys made, locks rekeyed, or your, your wife variety, variety of new and you'll save. Then look no further than, than the trusted choice of Fabric Safe and Lock. Conveniently, conveniently located off of Government Street in Mississippi and Baton Rouge. Trust, trust the expert locks, locks in that outfit for all, all of your residential, commercial, and then industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Take your fun full throttle with a single touch. There are places to fly high, swing low, or make the old bell ring. Your targets are in sight. Better your game by playing ball of almost every variety. Need to get your breath? There's a place for that, too. Countless ways to play beyond the swing sets. Breck, we're more than a playground. It is time to, to trade in your isolation for celebration, celebration to, to break out and, and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro, Metro Airport, Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in of the breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So, so get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro, Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com have a passion, we've got the place. Gear up for where the rubber meets the mud. Or stir up memories of a lifetime. Reach new heights. Gravitate towards something out of this world. Even travel back in time. You might like a little drama in your life. Or get in touch with your inner nature lover. Release some pent-up energy while you're at it. There's plenty to do beyond the swing sets. 
Brack, Brack we're, we're more, more than, than a playground. playground. Hey, hey Coach, Coach Roger Cato here. here. There's, There's something about teamwork, teamwork that brings the best out in any business. business. When, when I, I need a tool, I call, call Roadrunner Toy. Roadrunner is full generation strong and home road right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, and remember take, take time, time each day, day to be a blessing to someone. Thank, Thank you. you. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can, can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishment, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. It is time to train in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in of the breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com. With, With over 60 years, years of combined experience, Kathy Sherburn and Anna Barnett, Barnett bring a wealth, wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Frame and Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their customers to choose from. Whether you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kids' playroom, Acadian Frame and Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. Call 225-927-6129 or go to www.acadianframe.com. Looking, Looking to get, get some keys, keys made, locks rekeyed, or your wide variety, variety of new and used safe? safe. Then, then look, look no further than, than the trusted choice of Africa Safe and Lock. Conveniently located, located off of Government Street in Mississippi Baton Rouge. Trust, Trust the expert locks, locks in that outfit for all, all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Take, Take your fun full throttle with, with a single, single touch. There are places to fly high, swing low, or maybe the old bell ring. Your targets are in sight. Better your game by playing ball of almost every variety. Need to get your breath? There's a place for that, too. Countless ways to play beyond the swing sets. Breck, we're more than a playground. It is time to train in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in of the breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com. Have a passion, we've got the place. Gear up for where the rubber meets the mud. Or stir up memories of a lifetime. Reach new heights. Gravitate towards something out of this world. Even travel back in time. You might like a little drama in your life. Or get in touch with your inner nature lover. Release some pent-up energy while you're at it. There's plenty to do beyond the swing sets. Brack, we're more than a playground. Hey, Coach, Coach Roger, Roger Kador here. here. There's, There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When, when I need a tool, I call Roadrunner Toy. Roadrunner is full generation strong and home road right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. 
Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call the Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in of the breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com. With, With over 60 years, years of combined experience, Kathy Sherver and Anna Barnett, Barnett bring a wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Frame and Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their, their customers to choose from. Whether, Whether you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kids' playroom, Acadian Frame and Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. Call 225-927-6129 or go to www.acadianframe.com. All right, we're back. More chopping up with Kadar. We had to pay the bills. Bills are paid, and now the conversation continues, and I need you to hit that subscribe button right there underneath the video, get the notification every time we're live, and to support. We'd love to have your support. Perry White, Roger Kadar. Uh, Coach, as we head into the week, uh, it's starting to warm up around here now. <laughs> yeah, before, before we get going, we, we were scheduled to have Bob Kendrick, mm -hmm. president of the Negro League Museum in Kansas City, Missouri. But we had some technical issues. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get him on, so we'll find another day to have him. You guys, people out there are going to enjoy this interview. He's really a great guy to talk. He understands the museum, and he's got a history. And the walls talk to him when he walked through the museum. And that's what I was going to lead into when I was talking about it's warming up out there because baseball seasoned upon us. And as we talk about baseball, we were going to get uh, – him on and to give some history about the the negro league and and just behind you there's a picture of negro league stars on there who are some guys on that picture uh that you see uh you know that as you look at and pretty much probably all of them but you know for a lot of people who don't understand the teams the players and understand how important the negro league was for our culture and the opportunities that it gave for our culture not only that they went to a lot of stadiums around uh the south and played and brought excitement to communities that may not have had that type of excitement all the time like you saw on the on the white side of town that typically had uh, options for baseball or even watching mlb yeah you had Josh Gibson on this picture, Cool Papa Bell, Buck O'Neill, Leon Day, Oscar Charleston, Buck Leonard, Monty Irvin, Satchel Page, Ray Derringer, mm. Judy Johnson. Oh, what great players on this, man. This is, uh, these were great players. You know, Oscar Charleston, what a ball player. See, you hear by Josh and Cool Papa Bell and Satchel, but Ray Derringer and those guys, Judy Johnson, were great players in their own right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so. Uh, Did you ever get a chance as a youngster to check out a Negro League game? <laughs> I no, I never got to. You gave me a look. <laughs> you know, oh, you think I am, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I would hey. have been a... <laughs> <laughs> they saw that look you gave me. I saw it too. <laughs> I would have to be at least 100 years old. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. But <laughs> that was funny. 
Hey, okay. But growing up, you understood the importance of it. And I cannot wait till we get Bob on to be able to have that conversation because I love history. It's Black History Month. Right, right. And that was going down what I believe what we call in the, in the world today, going down the rabbit hole. Because once you spark my interest, I start to ask question after question after question to get a better understanding because it's such a rich history but within that rich history, so much was lost because of it was a lot of oral telling and not so much of script written. written. Yeah. Well, that's the only way they could tell. Now, there were writers, uh, but where is the written history? You know, when those black newspapers went out of business, they probably discarded a lot of that information. Mm. You got me? And, uh, but there were some people individuals who did a wonderful job of keeping artifacts, different kind of things. There are some things in that museum you would see. You could never have imagined that they was a part of the game that they used to play the game. I was just thoroughly impressed with some of the things. And I had to, uh, when I was playing with the Brave, we go to spring training in West Palm Beach, Florida. Mm. Uh, yeah, and Dusty Baker and I were talking about that uh, on on Friday. He and I, or Saturday, Saturday, we were talking about it. And uh, uh, there was a lady. She invited all of the black players for dinner after practice. And she, her house was loaded with history because she had the picture. Well, this is was a haven when the black players were playing. She opened her home, though. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And she got all of the pictures. And uh, that was typically, wonderful... back then, that's what it was. Is you didn't get the service of a hotel. Right, right. You had to go to your community. Somebody typically opened their home up, almost like bed and breakfast style, but it was just a regular home. Y'all yes. stay here along your journey. That's right. That's, that's right. And this lady did that for us. And this must have been in 73, 74, 75. So, you know, she kept that going for a while. And, uh, you know, so, you know, and Dusty was telling me, he said, you know, my career has come full circle. See, I started out in West Palm Beach with the Brave, which we did. He said, now we move into West Palm Beach for spring training this year. But more important, my son, Washington uh, nationals mm -hmm. or having their spring training day. He said, he said, this is full circle for him mm -hmm. to be in the same area, same camp with his son. Uh, and both teams are there. And so I said, you know, that is as good <coughs> as it gets. And I said, I'm going to make an effort to get to spring training. I'm still trying not to laugh because when I asked you, did you did it? <laughs> he gave me the way you looked at me. I'm sorry. That was funny to me. <laughs> Like, but I, I like what you guys used to do, uh, especially at Andre Dawson Classic. You guys used to rock the Negro League jerseys. You would come out and – No. That, that wasn't it? No, we did it with Gremlin. I bought those uniforms. Really? To do – yes, to have that special Negro League weekend against Gremlin. I saw, I saw value in it. Yeah. And that is – And you know what? The sad thing is nobody wants to wear them anymore. And why not? You know, I thought I, I thought we were so into the retro, uh, the throwbacks. And when I saw those, I mean, those retro throwbacks were, I, I loved every bit of that. I spent a lot of money to make that happen, uh, to get a home and a way set. So you could, I mean, you know, and what they did, the uniform had different cities where the Negro League played in mm -hmm. and the name of the teams. And the kids could really, they enjoyed that. Because those who were history buff, they saw the value of this. You got me? And uh, and people would come take pictures. I mean, this is the kind of stuff you're not going to see. You only were going to see that Southern and Gremlin. Mm -hmm. The only place you were going to see it. On, uh, unless you go to a minor league game or major league game. Mm -hmm. But on the collegiate level, you weren't going to see it anywhere else other than that. You know, something I would like, if there was like a – I know today's world of incorporating MLB because there's a lot of resources in MLB today. 
and which when we talked to Tony Regan, we saw along with you and Ken Griffey the resources that could help uh, doing uh, All Star. Uh, week once uh, MLB does that up in Seattle and doing this game for HBCUs. But I would love to see like a Negro League classic where just like what we saw with this Cactus Jack classic over in Houston uh, to where we brought in HBCUs and the history is told to these students. Uh, it is entrenched in them to understand where we come from to where we are today and to represent where we come from by wearing the jersey of what the past was to replicate what we are here in the future, here now in the present. I would love to see something like that. What you think? I think it's okay. Yeah. You can, I mean. And maybe play it like Kansas table. City or something. And it's it's something you're putting on the table. This mm -hmm. is why people have different ideas about what they would like to see. And it's always good to share it because who knows? Somebody share, you can bet. With what what Tony Regan and Ken Griffey Jr. Some of the things they do, they didn't come up with all of the ideas themselves. Someone shared. Mm -hmm. That's why people have to talk, and and <coughs> make known what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with you if it doesn't get accepted, but it's good to hear it, because I love listening to some of your wild thinking. Mm -hmm. You way out there, but that's okay. <laughs> you gotta have somebody off the wall a little bit to, to to reel it back in and say, you know what, some things in there did make sense, but because that history, and I believe if yeah. we're gonna teach that, it has to be taught for sure, starting with yeah. us at yeah. the H historically black colleges and universities. And I feel like a lot of the young generation had no clue. And I'm I'm a, I'm not young, but I'm in a generation that still has no clue of uh, truly the impact of what the Negro League meant to our communities, what it meant around the South, the excitement that it brought to our communities and the talent pool that was there. Yeah, I agree with you. So I would love to see something like that. Maybe if it's played in Kansas City or something, you know, we bring in just like what we did in Houston, uh, bring in those teams, and you throw, you wear the retros, the throwbacks in honor of the Negro League teams. And uh, while that, they go to the museum, they learn the history of who they are, where it came from, and how they got to this point. That's just me thinking, I'm, you know. I like that, though. I like that. <laughs> As we move forward through the week, Coach, what's your week looking like? Well, I'm scheduled to – today's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I'm scheduled tomorrow to be in New Orleans for the Andre Dawson invitation, and I'll be there all weekend. So, uh, you know, evaluating some of the kids, trying to get a handle on it and, and doing whatever is necessary. For the people out there that don't understand the Andre Dawson Classic, you just left Houston where that was a big deal, but now the Andre Dawson Classic. Uh, talk about that and, and what that means to uh, baseball. Well, you know, it was Urban Invitation. Jimmy Lee Solomon, Jimmy Lee Solomon and I first came up with that in 2009. We, we made that happen. It was Urban Invitation then. And we started out by playing over in Compton, California. And, uh, and what we did, we had a couple of HBCU universities and, uh, and a couple of historical white universities. We had UCLA, USC the first year. And uh, then we, got, we added a couple of more HBCU schools. Uh, oh, well, we added one. We added Gremlin and... And then they added another. So we had six teams. So once we got that done, we brought it uh, out of uh, California into Houston, up here, Minute Maid Park. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we started playing it there for a couple of years. Then we played one year at LSU, and then we played in New Orleans the other time at the academy there. So we moved it around a little. Uh, but now I think next year they're going to move it to Jackie Robertson Field in, in Vero Beach, which used to be Dodger Town. It's been renamed Jackie Robertson Field. So you're going to take it out west I, again? No, yeah. in Vero Beach, Florida. Florida, excuse me, east, excuse me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm thinking that's what they're going to do mm -hmm. because <coughs> they they have – they can do more things quicker there mm -hmm. because they have all the fields right there. And they've got the necessities to do whatever they need to do there. They have more control. 
You know what I found uh, interesting is I watched baseball uh, and the college baseball is getting uh, ramped up. You see a lot of the teams from the north when they come down to the south uh, doing spring, especially this time of year. And it's interesting how you have a baseball team that typically has a hard time practicing and getting in reps uh, when you, let's say, in Illinois, Wisconsin, okay, Michigan. We got that one. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you know, to, to be able to get to where you need to be to compete, but you come down you know, south. What they have, though, they have big indoor uh, facilities. Mm -hmm. They've got big – because those people knew – that that's why they got they the weather is going to be what it is. Mm -hmm. So they build big build they build big arenas, so they can do everything they need in the arena. Because I was watching they like still play a game, yeah, but they can hit throw, I mean field. They do all of that in, the, so they get their work in. It's just in in indoors. Well, see, I was watching one because Western Michigan. Uh, came down south, and I was listening to the commentator say that their their coach said they hadn't had a chance to do anything. They've been practicing on a parking lot because everything has been pretty much snowed in, so they've only been able to get he practice. Lied. <laughs> they work inside. He ain't doing nothing in the parking lot if it's snowing. Yeah, I mean that's not fair. Yeah, and I don't want to make the man make peace. Someone like you believe that? Yeah, because that's why that's why I asked the question because I was thinking like you know I never put it in perspective. He gave it away. If it's been snowing, they can't do nothing. Yeah. Only a fool would put his kids out there in the snow, mm -hmm. and I don't think that what they do they do what they can on the inside. When the weather permits, maybe they go to the parking lot mm -hmm. just to be outside because it's a little different inside than outside. You see what I'm saying? So. He he just didn't tell the whole story. Okay. They probably use the outdoors when it's it's workable. But the other side, you can't do anything when it's when it's snowing. I mean, you go hurt somebody. Yeah, and I was that's what I was wondering when I heard that I was intrigued by that, and I and it started to get some things in my head. So I said, I'm going to ask coach because there's definitely a difference of playing baseball when it's a warmer temperature like it is now yeah, yeah. compared to last week when it was cold out there, about 30, low, uh, upper 20s, low 30s. Uh, what does that do in the dynamic of the game, even when you talk about pitching and fielding when it's cold like that? Well, you could hurt yourself easily. Mm -hmm. It's harder to get the muscles loose. And, you know, they have a tendency to tighten up. And then when you ex exert it, that's how you get a tear. Mm -hmm. You try to exert, you see? But when you're 80 degrees, you're sweaty, you're lubricated, you got flexibility. You, very few people going to get hurt in that kind of temperature because the muscles are allowed to go do more things. You got me? Mm -hmm. See, when the muscles like this, it's easy to, you call on it to do something quick, you can tear something. Mm -hmm. But when you're sweaty, you're all loose and everything. But look, I'm going to be loose this week because it's supposed to be about 90 degrees here in South Louisiana. So, you know what that means? It's grilling season for me. And I don't know. Do you grill? You grill. You, yeah. You're a griller too. So, yeah. I guess Coach and I will be grilling this week as it's warmed no, up. not this week. I'll be in New Orleans. Okay. Well, he won't be. You'll be down there eating some good food. Well, the food is okay. The food is better <laughs> than Bad Rouge. I've been. The food is better than Bad Rouge than New Orleans. And, you know. That's big time. We're going to have a conversation about that one day, too, because there's always a conversation. Is it the 504, is it the 225, or is it the 337 that has the best food in South Louisiana? 337 ain't bad. Yeah. I think 337 got New Orleans. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're well, 318 also. Well, not. No, it's not 318, it's 337 now. You like the 337? They got the best food? Well, they got good food, too. <laughs> he said that is what it is. Well, we reached the end of another episode. Today has been a, it's been up and down, but dealt with some technical difficulties. But we'll get back on track next week. And uh, for everybody out there, like I said, I hope you had a great week. Uh, great weekend, safe weekend, no matter where you at for Mardi Gras, that you enjoyed yourselves. And, of course, Coach will be down in New Orleans. They have the Andre Dawson Classic. And uh, so if you're in the area, South Louisiana, be sure to get down there and check that out or just enjoy yourself. The weather's supposed to be great this week. So, as always, we want to thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll be back same time, same place next week. 
Coach, get us out of here.